Hi everybody, this is Adrian and welcome to another Apache NiFi tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial we're going to see how we can actually insert data using Apache NiFi into Amazon Redshift. So Amazon it's, um, it's a database uh, fully managed by AWS and it's a columnar database. I'm not going to go into details about it. Um, there's plenty of tutorials there. Soon I will start making some of them to demonstrate the capabilities of uh, Redshift. Anyway, so I already have a cluster created and I've called it Bread. And I've already have a demo, uh, let's say a demo <coughs> workflow. That will pretty much work out. Is we're going to generate a flow that's going to have a record. Uh, this generate flow file pretty much substitutes any data stream that might come from uh, any sources or from inside the Apache NiFi. And I have a put SQL with a JDBC connection pool pointing to Redshift DDC connection pool. So in this story, we're going to see how we can set up this JDBC connection pool. Uh, what I did, I already took the liberty to log in to Redshift and I'm, I'm going to create a table called uh, users and uh, make sure so it's created let's add some from the command line this is not a command line from the UI and we can see that the data is getting inserted and now let's go and see what are the components we need to set up for this to for this flow to work exactly like we do here you know we create a table we have some data we can select data but let's go ahead and see how we can set up all those components. So we're gonna do one in parallel. So first of all, we're gonna do, we're gonna copy this one. We're gonna copy this uh, generic flow file, and we're gonna jump into it, and we're gonna uh, look at how the SQL works. So I made some changes. I made some changes here. I want to insert a get date. So the insert insert date will receive a get date uh, function output, which is the it's a daytime value. So let's go back here and let's just put it like this. So this custom text will be thrown inside the flow file. And then we're gonna drop on the canvas a put SQL processor. And we're gonna link them with success. I will start by generating every second is fine. And next, we need to configure the JDBC connect. So here, I'm not going to specify the SQL statement. Uh, we're going to leave everything by default. But here, we're going to drop down and say create new service. And we're going to call it my red shift JDBC connection. Well, great. Now, we're going to jump into it. Say yes. And you see, we already have it invalid here. We're going to go into the configuration and we're going to set up all the values that we require. So first, the database connection pool. If you don't know your database connection URL, uh, database connection URL, not pool, you can go to your to your EC2 um, GUI and down here at the connect client, what you want to do, first, you want to select the driver you want to use. In our case, we're going to use the JDBC 4.2 and you're going to download it push it into your uh, Apache NiFi server. Next, what you're going to do, you're going to select the cluster you want to connect. So this is, we only have a cluster called red. And here, this will provide you with a full JDBC URL. Just copy this. Go back to your Apache NiFi and paste it. Great, the next thing we want to do, we want to find out the driver class. So the driver class is this, but if you're using another driver, just copy this, open a new URL. I'm going to put this in the description. This is in Amazon documentation. And this pretty much will give you all the class names of all the drivers that you might want to use. So I've already done that. I already have a copy of the driver class. I'm going to copy it and paste it in the driver class. Now, another thing is driver location. So this has to stay this has to be a library on your Apache NiFi service. So what I did, I already took it, take the liberty to copy it and I have it next to my other 
external leaves. So I have it in OPT NiFi external leaves. I'm going to copy and add the redshift jar to it. Okay. Now the database user. This is the Redshift database user. Don't worry, this cluster will be long gone <laughs> before you guys see this tutorial. And uh, you can actually set up the max total connection or the max wait time. Uh, if if the service does not respond in 800 milliseconds, it will fail. Or validation query. In this case, I'm going to put select one. Say so, OK, apply, and now enable. So we're going to enable this. Great. Now we're going to jump back into our canvas. Still, this is invalid. The reason why is because there are no connection for the log. So we're going to make a copy of the, of the log attribute and we're going to go here with success and we're going to add a failure here and continue with the retry because we want to keep track of everything. And now let's go ahead and start our execution. So we're going to start, you see, and uh, let's start to put SQL. And we can see we already had four successful ins insert. Nine, uh, 10, 11. Let's go back to our database and see what is actually happening. Uh, do we see them? And here we can see that uh, data is getting inserted. So it's not an optimal way to push data into Pashi, uh, into, Pashi into Redshift us using NiFi. Uh, the normal way to do this in Redshift is to do it through. Uh, Amazon S3 buckets and run the copy commands, but that's when you do bulk data and bulk inserts, you know uh, Occasionally you might want to use this shortcut and have pipelines created very easy to do and um, in um, uh, Using a passion iPad. Well, I hope you guys Learned something new from this one. I'll put all the details in the tutorial description and in the next tutorial, we're going to see how we can actually use the copy command, the AWS S3 buckets, and all the copy commands pushing data into Amazon Redshift, but we're going to orchestrate them to Apache Nifi. All right, see you guys in the next tutorial.